Sorry about the wobbly camera, but I'm doing this freehand a little bit. I, uh, this is the next project for the bench. This is the insides of one of the TM5006 power frames. This one uh, was the one that was on the bottom of my shelf towards the, was on the bottom towards the shelf. And this one has a problem. Uh, noticed it when I was working on the 7B92As. My plugins weren't staying stable. The clocks on the some of the plugins weren't staying stable. So, given the serial number and the way these capacitors look, I have a sneaking suspicion we have high ripple on the power supply, and for sure, this needs to be cleaned. All I've done so far, I haven't done anything on the unit, all I've done is um, just taking the covers off. So, let me get the camera back on the tripod and I'll show you guys what's going on. Okay, so, this is a look at the power supply for a TM5000 frame. This is a 5006, so a 6 bay. Um, the plugins go up here. They slide in from the top and they come down here. These are the rails that hold the plugins on. So if you look at this, it's kind of deceiving because you have this big chunk and power transformer right here. And we got some weirdness here. And then we got some big caps here, big caps here, smaller caps there, and some smaller caps down here. This is the GPIB interface. It comes in and it just literally daisy chains to the plugins. Uh, those are for the 5000 series plugins. None of the 500 series plugins are um, GPIB. You can even get uh, BNCs to come in here. Now, when you buy this with the BNC option, there is no wiring. The BNCs, however, how you want to connect them onto this board, you can just pass them through. Now the interesting thing about that is the pinouts depend on the plugins. So if you do wire up one of the BNCs to the plug-in, you have to remember what goes in what slot because that's important down the line because some of these back uh, pinouts are different. So you may get some strange signals where you don't want them. One of the goofy things with the 500 and the 5000 series is there is a PNP and an NPN pass transistor for every module. That is not in the module. A lot of the modules use them in circuit, but they're not in the module itself. They are right here. So these have nothing to do with the power supply. These are the PMP and PN pass elements. I'm going to test them all, make sure they're all okay. There's two on this side, four across the top. Both the uh, one of the sets, one is MPN, one's PNP. Don't know which one yet. And there's two bigger power transistors over here. The reason they're over here, this, these are the PNP and NPN for this slot right here. This is the high power slot. So if you plug in a power supply module, uh, if you don't have it in a high power slot, it's limited to 400 millivolts, milliamps, sorry. If you plug it into a high power slot, it will go up to an amp. So I do have one of those power modules. If you guys are curious, we can take a look at that too. This is a floating power transformer that is for the plug-ins. It has actually nothing to do with the DC supply for the plug-ins. This is another floating power transformer that also feeds the sockets directly, but it doesn't do anything with the supply. That's why all the wiring goes down there as opposed to over that way. So our main DC outputs are actually over here, in which case I believe we have eight volts and then plus and minus 26. My guess is we are getting some ripple on the 26 volt rails. So my plan for this supply is one, clean it. Um, and we'll zoom in. This is as opened. I haven't even haven't done anything on this yet. So that needs needs it <laughs> needs to meet the air compressor. So I'll take this out into the garage, blow it outside, get all the dust out. Uh, fan's actually in pretty good shape, but it, it is kind of crusty. Don't ignore this warning. Uh, if you're working on one of these supplies up to 400 volts, there is rectified mains voltage direct off the rectifiers into these two main filter cans. Um, these can store a lot of power. This has been off for three or four days, so I don't mind putting my hands in it, but these can store a lot of power. 
and up to 400 volts depending on where you're at in the world. So not something to be taken lightly. These two are going to go. These four are going to go. These actually look in pretty bad shape. Um, they got some stuff leaking out the bottom of them, so I'll get these replaced. I'm trying to find suitable replacements. These are a odd size. These are going to go. These two and these three. So these are going to go. And then I'll probably, since I'm in here, I will do these electrolytics as well. I have not seen in all the Tektronics gear that I've restored on the channel so far, I have not run into any of these big can capacitors that were 125 degrees C rated or 105 degrees C rated. Actually, I haven't run into any that were above 85. These are 125 degrees C rated caps. So these were not cheap when they were originally purchased. Given the serial number on this frame, it's an early unit. So these have some age on them. So we'll get them swapped out. But that's the plan so far. Just this cluster of caps, the two mains, and these guys down here. And then we'll do a uh, adjustment just to get it back into spec, give it a good cleaning. And then hopefully it will make my plugins happy and the clocks won't be stupid. So that's just the plan for this one. I got to order parts. I got to set this aside for a little bit because I'll need the bench for other stuff this weekend. That's going to be the next restoration is to get this power frame back in use. Uh, to get into these, the feet on the back. There's four feet on the back. They just come off and then the lid slides off very nicely. These are not hard to get into. So, but that's next. So we will take a look at that when I get the parts. I will bring you guys back. Okay, well, I have the everything all patched up. New caps in, two at the bottom, cluster at the top. Had an interesting troubleshooting uh, response that I, uh, or interesting troubleshooting issue on this when I tried to test it. Um, after replacing some of them, I tested it to make sure everything was holding, and then I got uh, everything reinstalled ready for the first power up after putting the filters and everything in so we'll do a quick smoke test before I put some uh, do a quick smoke test here real quick and nothing was eventful which is good so you'll notice one of the transistors is a different color I'll point that out after I turn this off here real quick I'm going to let this run for a while after I get, I got to put the top back on. But this transistor is a different color. Um, so one of the pass elements went super low HFE and I uh, had to get that swapped out. I checked them all, so they're all fine. If you do work on one of these frames, these pass elements, make sure you get these exactly right. Um, the collector base and emitter is swapped around given the date of the module, so you have to reference what's here. Make sure you get an exact replacement. Had to order one from NTE. They were not cheap. Uh, this is a $32 transistor, so really not cheap. Um, so I hope you guys don't run into that problem. But uh, everything's up, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the lid back on and then fire it up. Just let it burn the power supply in for a while. Hopefully nothing eventful happens, and I will get the uh, schematic out, and I'll talk about the interesting uh, troubleshooting issue and fault that I found, and we will go from there, but this one should be ready to go for the long haul now. Okay, I'm going to get some probes here real quick, and I'm just going to sanity check the frame before I stick any of my more valuable modules in. I just got a voltmeter hooked up. The only thing I'm really looking for is uh, the world doesn't blow up and this doesn't smoke out. Turn the output on. Fire the frame up. That's giving me 14 and a half volts. So that looks good. Everything's okay there. Negative 14.9. I'll let that bleed off. Thank you. 
Check this bay too, just for good measure. Fourteen nine, so that's fine too. So everything looks good there. So what I will do is this is my meter frame. I'll just get the voltmeters. We'll load them up, and uh, I will just let the power supply cook and make sure nothing happens. Okay, well, I have the frame loaded up with its meters again. Yes, this is mildly overkill. Um, when I was working on the scopes and things, I had to work on multi-rail power supplies, so I was able to dedicate a meter per power rail so I could watch the whole supply as I was having everything burn in. So this is six meters. They are calibrated. I went, I went through the entire process that I did in a previous video. So all six meters... Hopefully nothing smokes. And it powers back up. So one of the things that tipped me off that this power supply was having problems was my SG-503, the scope calibration generator. It was wobbling. Uh, the frequency wasn't stable on it. So it was acting all kinds of squirrely and things like that. I did find some caps that were open and everything was ready to go. I'll let this sit for probably the rest of the night and most of the day tomorrow just to make sure it's okay not having a problem. Here's the uh, power transistor that um, went bad. We'll test this here real quick. And has an HFE. You guys can't really see that down there. has an HFE of 17. So that's pretty awful. So he was out for sure. Um, let me get the uh, rest of the carnage parts. Well, I'll push this back and then we'll take a look at the parts and stuff that uh, were replaced in here. If this thing survives its burning, it'll be ready to go back into service. And here's the carnage left from repairing the... 5006, the bulk filters, some of the smaller filters, a lot of the bypassing caps. Um, this one is my fault. I actually ended up getting that one in circuit backwards, so this guy overheated and is dead. If I test him, his ESR is probably high. We can do that. Oh, yeah, here we go. Actually, it looks like he may have survived the experience, but I wouldn't trust him anymore. He got pretty hot, so... Um, just swapped him out with another one. That was, uh, that one was my fault. I misread the symbols on the board. This is the pass element that went low HFE. So it's still a good transistor, just not, uh, not good for that service anymore. So I had to replace him. All the other transistors tested okay. These are the big bulk guys. So that's all the stuff that had to be replaced in this build. What I'll do is I'll clear that out, and then I will uh, get the schematic and talk about that interesting failure mode that I had while I was working on this thing. So I'll be right back. Okay, this is the schematic of the power filtering se section where I had a weird failure. Let me zoom out a minute. Here's the main switching transformer. This is what generates the three voltages, the negative 26, the positive 26, and the positive 8. Uh, the fault that I had was on the positive 26, so I'm going to talk about that. So let me zoom back in here real quick, and I will talk about this fault. Okay, so the fault that was pretty interesting happened actually in between C2010 and L2100. The weird thing was, this is supposed to be the same point on the circuit. Um, I had the 26 volts at the positive side of C2010, but I had no output. So tracking it through, I tested at the input to L2100, and it turns out that uh, I did not have any voltage on this inductor. Well, what ended up happening is... This inductor picks up the voltage on the top side of the board. The cap picks up its voltage on the bottom side of the board. The cap had actually corroded the plated through hole away, 
and there was nothing left. So the voltage was stopping right here and wasn't getting to the inductor to continue on. It's how the stack up was done. So I had to uh, really heat this joint up with soldering iron to get the voltage to get the solder to flow through on the other side to make the connection. It's relying on the uh, pin of the cap, which is fine. It'll hold forever. It's a piece of 14 gauge wire. But um, yeah, that got my uh, 20, 26 volts back at the output, but it was it was broken right there, so I wasn't getting any voltage through past that inductor. Um, but it, it ended it wasn't a component failure; it ended up being a failure of the board. So that was an odd one to find. Thanks for stopping by the lab today. The power frame is back where it belongs, with all the meters in it. Everything does fire up and reads correctly, so it's good for service for a good long time, and I shouldn't have any more problems with that. So that's what we got going today, but that's all for now, and I will see you guys in the next video.